This evening, we'll have a reflective sermon based on John chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. As we consider this Ash Wednesday evening, Jesus' words, I tell you the truth, he who sins is a slave to sin. We'll discuss how Christ has set us free. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours tonight from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. John chapter 8 verses 31 to 36. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you they say that you will set us free? And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So far the text this evening. These words might sound familiar to you. You will not surely die. It's been thousands of years since Satan spoke those words in the Garden of Eden, but ever since, Lucifer's language has remained the same. Lie, lie, lie. Sometimes he shouts it, sometimes he whispers it, sometimes he simply speaks it in a monotone sound so that it sounds very convincing and we suspect nothing shady. But he still speaks. Listen. You're your own boss. You can have it all. You're worthless. No one loves you. That's unforgivable. That was a cultural thing. Not God's will. We live in a world where the devil's dialect is all around us constantly and we hear it repeated throughout society, our society and others. We hear the same words coming. And that's why it's so important for us this Lenten season to listen to the voice of the one who has the truth. God willing, over these next six weeks, we'll have the opportunity to walk with our Lord and listen to what he says, for he is the savior of the world. And as we do, we'll see him suffer, we'll see him die, We'll see him rise again. And even so, we'll also hear him speak as we listen. We'll hear him repeatedly assure us, I tell you the truth. Now the truth is not what we always want to hear, is it really? We don't want to hear that the jeans that we're wearing are just getting a little bit tight. We don't want to hear about the girl or the guy that we're dating is probably not right for us. We don't want to hear that sort of thing. We don't want to hear that we've made a mistake at work. Or too often truth is about really what we want something to be and not what it really is all about. And maybe that explains our defenses as we listen tonight. They go up. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. I understand that I sin. I admit that I sin. But as soon as Jesus says that I'm a slave to sin, then I don't want to hear it anymore. It makes me feel helpless. It makes me feel like I'm not in control of my own life. But it is the truth, isn't it? Frederick Douglass, the freed slave that turned into an abolitionist in the 1800s wrote, I didn't know that I was a slave until I found out I couldn't do the things I wanted. As Christians, what do we really want to do? We certainly don't want to sin. And can we not sin? No. By nature, we are sinful. We are the slaves of sin. We may live in a land that's free, but by nature, we are enslaved to it. We might say, okay, okay, I'm a slave, so now what? 
I suppose we could downplay the seriousness of the truth if we chose. We could say uh, something like, who cares if I sin? Everybody sins. I still know who Jesus is and what he did for me, so what's the big deal if I'm a slave to sin? You recognize that voice, don't you? Those are the words, those honey dripping off the lips words of the great deceiver, the father of lies. How about this? Okay, okay, sin is a big deal. I get it. In fact, it bothers me that I sin. But don't you see me doing a lot of good things too? I'm doing a lot of stuff that is morally right. So why don't you comment on the good things I do and stop bringing me down with all that harping on the bad stuff? Do you recognize those words? Those are his words as well, aren't they? Again, it's the devil talking, trying to get us to look at our own, our own deeds, our own works, as the counterweight, the counterbalance to the sin that so entangles us. Our deeds, no matter how good, we already know, according to the world scales, cannot cut through the manacles with which sin binds us. But let's face this, it's not really the label slave, the sin that really bothers us, you and I. And I have a problem with, it's the status that the title puts us in before God. A slave, Jesus says in our text, has no permanent place in the family. It almost sounds like Jesus is, is leaning toward being one of those mafia people. You're not part of this family. But, what's his point? It's very clear. Jesus is warning us that a slave to sin has no room reserved for him or her in heaven. That's just the short end of it. No room in heaven. Now, sin is a big deal. Sin is a very big deal. And, for example, if I were in a classroom of a hundred children, and I were to ask the children, each one, to raise their hand if they were a sinner, you'd probably see a hundred hands go up. If I were to ask those same children, if they sinned so much that they deserved hell, a number of those hands would probably go down because we're just not comfortable with the seriousness of what we do in our lives every day. We can handle facing the truth, yeah, we're sinners, and through our personal experiences, we've seen it, we understand it, we've experienced it, and we're accustomed to that title, because it's true, we are sinners. But, if we're told that we deserve hell, that is a little bit different. That sounds a little worse. That's a little tougher for this old human nature to swallow, but it's true. And quite frankly, that's what Ash Wednesday is really all about, isn't it? It's about leading us to come to grips with the truth of what God told Adam way back at the beginning. From dust you are, and to dust you will return. So as slaves, we deserve to die. As slaves to sin, we deserve hell. Okay, so how do we get out of it? How do we escape it? What's the escape plan? Do we do some Harry Houdini trick to get out of the chains of sin and get our freedom? You've heard the old saying, it's not so much what you know is who you know. And fellow slaves, we need the key to freedom. And the key to freedom is really knowing the one who holds the key to release our chains, to open the locks of the manacles. And that person, that key person, is Jesus. As the Son of God, he's established an eternal residency for us in heaven. He holds in his hands the keys to eternal life. It says in our text, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So the question now becomes, how do we get to know this key person? And Jesus says, if you remain in my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And this teaching, and it's not any teaching, it's this teaching. It's the teaching of Jesus in the Bible. 
is the key that Jesus uses to unlock the shackles that contain us. The teaching shows a Jesus who didn't hand us a checkoff list so that we could do the right things and be good enough to pass all of his tests, all of his do's and don'ts, and live a perfect life. Because we simply couldn't do it. But it's about a Jesus who did all the do's and don'ts for us and lived a perfect life that we could never live. This teaching shows us Jesus didn't really feel sorry for us and he saw us getting beaten and whipped by our slave master sin, but a Jesus who actually stepped in and took the beating on our behalf and became sin for us. It's a teaching that shows that Jesus didn't get knocked out by sin when he stepped into our place. But a Jesus who stormed back from the grave, a Jesus who's signing and sealing our own emancipation proclamation. And this teaching tells us the truth of Jesus. Jesus sets us free. He's the icing on the cake. Not only are we set free from the shackles of sin and the lengths of the law and all the demands and curses and condemnations, we are now free to serve God and one another by nature. That's something we couldn't do. Our sinful nature only wants to serve ourselves. That's what the sinful nature does. Our sinful nature craves things like sexual immorality, hatred, discord, envy, drunkenness, and the like. We tend to judge the motives of others and others' hearts without knowing what's in them. But since Christ has set us free, we don't have to get caught up in those things anymore. They are not our masters. Rather, our new self, our freed self, is equipped and motivated to live for God. We're free to carry other people's burdens as Jesus carried ours. We're free to forgive other people as Jesus has so freely forgiven us. We're free to spend our time for others as Jesus has spent his time for us. We're free to live in the truth of Jesus' words. A few decades after Jesus had his conversation on freedom with the Jews, in our lesson tonight, the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write on the same topic when he writes to Christians like the, us, it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened any longer by a yoke of slavery. And a little later on in Galatians, he goes on to talk about the fact that God has demonstrated what this would look like. Instead of being living in immorality, hatred, discord, envy, strife, drunkenness in the life, living in the freedom of the gospel includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and then my favorite part of the scripture there, against such there is no law. It's true, we were once at one time in our past before faith, slaves of sin. And the power of sin is the law. But the Holy Spirit has worked faith in your heart and he has worked faith in my heart. And we are doing things against which there is no law. We are living for Christ. We are living by the gospel. What is the evidence? Sin has no power over you any longer. Sin is no longer your master. Because through faith, the Son has set you free. And so you are free to live for him today. And you're free to live with him forever. And when he says, he who believes in me will never die. He's telling you the truth. He is your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.